Well, hello everybody, this is Catherine Toon. Welcome to GOMA, Global Online Ministry Alliance, um, and Happy Easter, everyone. I was trying to get this to air to my business channel as well, and we just do not have enough bandwidth. So, uh, welcome, Happy Easter. Uh, I have a uh, kind of a, a conflict with the airwaves. We've got this big Zoom thing going on with all these family members. <laughs> Uh, and it's a little bit of a of chaos. Good morning, Jermaine. Happy Easter. So um, anyway, so my bandwidth is way down. So we're just uh, uh, filming on Goma this morning. Uh, so I do have some cool stuff for you, uh, just stuff that the Lord was ministering to me. So I figure if it ministers to me, it's going to minister to someone else. Good morning, Mike. Happy Easter. So uh, I felt like, um, you know, in the midst of everything that's going on, there's so many questions. When, when is the, uh, you know, wh when is the quarantine going to be over? Am I going to be able to go back to work? Uh, if you have a ministry or church, it's like, wow, you know, are we going to be able to ramp up? Are we going to be able to pay the bills? How is that all going to happen? Uh, there's health questions, financial questions, personal questions, all the questions that you had before we went into this, right? There's a lot of questions. And, you know, in that place where we have so many questions, there can be a great deal of torment, right? There can be uh, anxiety, there can be fear, uh, there can be restlessness, there can just be unknowns. We like, we like uh, a known quantity. And life is kind of not a known quantity. You just kind of kind of get into a groove and it changes. Good morning, Lisa. Uh, so I, I felt like uh, one of the things that the Lord wanted to minister this morning is that his re resurrection actually quiets the questions. You know, sometimes when you ask a question of God um, and you don't get an answer, sometimes it's not that, uh, that you know, that, God is not talking. Sometimes it's actually the wrong question, right? Sometimes the, the question, what really needs to be answered is not the exact question, but the fact that, wow, it's going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. It's going to be good. I can trust you, God. I can trust you not knowing the answers. I can rest. You see, people, the issue of rest is that you can't rest if you're in fear. You can't rest if it's all up to you and that's kind of the orphan hearted uh concept is that is that it's a performance based i can't rest because i can't count on god to take care of me because really i'm an orphan uh, at heart so i've always had to take care of myself so why would you take care of me god right and so that's a big issue that's that's that issue of separation right and so sometimes uh, that that presents itself as an ongoing restlessness where uh, people go from thing to thing to thing to thing and they never kind of settle into kind of a, a productive fulfilling thing and sometimes it's because our people are maybe a high performer uh, by the world standards but they can never rest they can never settle down and that this latter was me oh my god with my bless my orphan heart you know um <laughs> at the time oh my goodness did this take some time years to get uh get that worked out of me because i i had to, i you know i i knew about you know the gospel kind of and and kind of what that meant and the fact that you know uh it's one thing for god to become a human being and that's his value for humanity, his value for you personally, right? In our humanity, his value for that and his value to help us fulfill uh, what it means to be a whole human being in union with God, right? And so what does that look like? And so uh, in the place where, where God uh, became human and those crucified and resurrected basically it means you know i've got this whole thing wrapped up and tied up with a bow you know god god was in christ reconciling the entire world so he really has a plan for the entire world now do people does that mean that all dogs go to heaven automatically i personally don't uh subscribe to that i subscribe to 
all people are in Christ and they're invited to experience that. And if they choose by an act of their will for eternity not to partake of the relationship that is continually open to them, then um, they're not going to experience that. That will be hell. And so, you know, God is in the midst of hell, right? God is omnipresent, but people don't need to be in relationship with him. You know, love is so beautiful, that he woos but he doesn't control love is not love if there is control so i i don't subscribe to blanket uh universalism but i subscribe to a universal invitation and that all humanity is in christ it's not it's not an in christ issue it's a whether people are partaking of what it means to be in Christ, what it means to have for Christ to have become a human being, being made sin, who knew no sin, that he might be made, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, and having gone to the cross and resurrected and included all humanity and all um, our old sin nature, all of that, that fallen part of us in him, that we would be no longer um, uh, alive to sin, but we'd be dead to sin and alive unto righteousness that we would have a new nature never seen before made in righteousness and true holiness and that all humanity can partake of that should they choose good morning Derek so that you know you don't have to choose <laughs> right you can choose not to choose you can choose to say no to God for eternity and he will honor that why because he honors us he honors our humanity he honors that he, he, he loves humanity so much he became one uh, but it's pretty hard to say no for to love for eternity so I'm I'm, I'm a hopeful I, I I have great hope that God can champion the entire world even even as they it included the entire world in himself he can champion them and woo their hearts so that they will awaken to him and embrace him and experience that good morning Chris so you know I titled this quieted questions in the wake of resurrection good morning Kyle happy Easter everybody so what what are the quieted questions well you know let's let's face it any question that you have in your heart of hearts consciously or subconsciously that is causing rest that is causing fear that is causing shame that is cost ca thank you Kyle I love you so much that is causing um I was just so sweet I had to say that and I just totally lost my train of thought uh, that is causing rest unrest that is causing fear that is causing shame that is causing any sense that you're not as gorgeous as Jesus is because as he is so are we everything that he is we are I mean it's unbelievable that is how much God values humanity that for eternity one member of the Godhead will be eternally human that's incredible that is and that's not just um, Jesus and then you have you know a father God looking away distastefully no that is the entire Trinity because God was in Christ reconciling the whole entire world this was a partnership by the Trinity to partake of what it means to be human so he could um, he could he could raise humanity up uh, in their conscious awareness so that they would be to be able to partake of the divine nature right they're not gonna force anybody to do that right but he's really good at his job he's really good at wooing and so you know for uh, on on my end of things with my uh, relatives and things who I who I love and who are uh, lost with a capital L I mean honestly I just they're yes <laughs> God and they're fighting for the privilege of being lost and and all of that I've just learned to rest because God is so masterful you know every single person is a son and daughter now there they may not be manifested as a son and daughter of God but they're a son and daughter why because they're created in his image and like this he birthed a race of children who he adores whether they spit in his eye or not right whether they say the name of Jesus that it listen he's he loves because he is love he can't help himself and in that place he helps us awaken and gain 2020 vision about who he is and who we are in him so all and because of that good morning David good morning Priscilla because of that right we get to rest 
right? All those nagging questions because one way or the other, listen, if God is good, but he is anemic and wimpy and not masterful, okay, that's not going to cause you to rest, right? If he's not bigger than you are, well, you got some big problems that you can't control. We don't have control over, you know, the coronavirus for humanity and we don't have control. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow or in the next 15 minutes. So if, if you're not able to connect with the fact that God is altogether good, he's the father of lights on whom there's no shadow of turning. There's no dark part of God. There's no love ya and give you a right hook. You know, there's none of that. He just is lovely. He's just lovely. And He's so powerful. Good morning, Corey. He's so powerful because love never fails. So that not only is he good, but he's masterful. Not only is he gentle and trustworthy, but he's cosmically powerful. And you've got him packed all inside you. And because of that, all your questions, he answers with himself. So I'm just going to do one scripture today. So for those of you who are kind of gotten a little down on scripture, <laughs> a little burnout, it's okay. Um, and this one's actually in the New King James. What a, what a concept. And it's Zephaniah 3.10. You guys have heard this one. It's 4.10. It says, the Lord your God is in your midst. Now this is not, well, he's in your midst, like in a crowd, right? Of course, but he's in the midst of you. There's no part of you that's separate from God. The mighty one. Okay, so this is the spirit of might. This is the kick butt aspect of God. Okay, we'll say the word saved. Um, actually, um, this, this is an old uh, covenant, an old testament uh, word. So actually, I don't know what it is. The, the, the new testament word is the way the word uh, sozo or soterion, which is to save, heal, and deliver. What needs to be saved? Well, this is not an issue keeping your butt out of hell, but it's keeping hell out of your existence, right? Now, I love this one. He will rejoice over you with gladness. You know, you're his favorite thing. And he rejoices. He gets to rejoice over you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So in that place where you're quieted, because if you know you're thoroughly loved, that there's no dirty parts of you or yucky parts of you and maybe you've done some really awful things i mean you know come on you're human too right some really nasty burger things some ugly things and those are the things we tend to hide right um from ourselves and from others and those are the places where we uh, where we have uh, shame but you know uh whatever is is not revealed is unhealed and so god wants to bring that part into the light and let you know that he loves you right there. Jeez, if God can't love you at your ugliest, he can't love you, right? If he can't love you with your most heinous sin, he can't love you. And so in that place where you can't help yourself, where you are paralyzed, there are places where I'm like, Jesus, if, if you don't pull this one off, it's not happening, <laughs> right? It's just not right? Because I'm not under any kind of delusion that apart from him, I can pull it off, right? And the beautiful thing is I'm not apart from him, but there are places that still feel apart, right? There, there are places that I don't have control. I don't have influence. I have influence towards you. Hopefully it's a benign, lovely, life-giving influence, but I can't control you. So where you may decide to do something awful, you know, where you may decide to kill yourself or kill other people. I don't, I can't control you and God's not going to control you, right? But in that place where are these things that we can't control, right? And so it causes fear and pain and anxiety. Maybe you're in an addiction cycle um, and that's causing shame. And so bringing those places out into the light so the Lord can minister to it. The Lord is like he's the, is the divine physician, right? His judgment is say, hey, what is diagnostic here that is not true of you that you're believing? Let me help you with that. Let me help you with that and upgrade you with that so you can actually, oh my goodness, experience life more abundant to the full 
till it overflows. So you have so much life, it just overflows out of you. You see, God quiets us with his love. So sometimes, you know, when is it going to happen? How do I do this? What do I do? And, and you're not getting an answer. Well, you, you might just need the answer of love. Like a beloved child who doesn't need to know, wow, how are we going to pay the bills? Wow, how are we going to drive from, you know, from Kansas to Vermont? You know, they don't even know that. They just know they're loved. No, I got this. That's all they need to know. And then you can go off and play. Oh my goodness, that is your divine assignment to be able to play and enjoy life as a beloved son and a beloved daughter because your your questions, your um, uh, uh, agonizing questions are all answered and quieted in his love. You see, we don't need to figure it all out. That is another um, aspect of an orphan-hearted person, right? Um, is that they have to figure it out. Why? Because they, they've got to test the waters and what's going to pop out of the, what horrible thing is going to pop out? What do I have to, when is the other shoe going to drop? So I got to figure this all out because no one's going to take care of me. So I've got to take care of myself. And where you feel like you need to take care of yourself and you're not at rest to let God take care of you, or you, you're struggling with your faith to believe that because you know, probably you don't, you haven't had a grid for it, right? Well, if you don't have a grid for a father that takes care of you, you're going to have a hard time getting a grid for a, a, a uh, father that you don't see to take care of you. And that is where love can minister to your heart, that you're so adored. Well, of course you're going to take care of me. One way or the other, it's going to be good. And that is a good mantra for you to repeat. Yes, I know things suck and, and we're not pretending, we're not delusional, right? Uh, that everything is just so great. You know, it drives me a little crazy. We kind of have a camp out here and they have this thing about their confession. And every time you talk to them, I'm blessed and highly favored. It kind of drives me a little batty. Uh, and, and it's not, that's not true. You are blessed and you are highly favored, but I'm looking at your life and I'm seeing a train wreck. So apparently there's a part of you that you're trying to convince that you're actually blessed and highly favored. And so you're not allowed to have a problem because you're blessed and highly favored. And the truth is you're going to have a problem that needs ministry, that needs help, that needs to be quieted with the love of God because God died and rose for you as, as as becoming human. Because of that, apparently you're needing some persuading in your own heart because if you're if you're not believing it, it's not going to bear fruit. So you can confess till your little confessor falls off. Ask me how I know this and have zero fruit <laughs> in that department. So yes, you're blessed. Yes, you're high, highly favored. But until you're experiencing that, okay, it's not going to manifest. And so you might want to just be honest and authentic and it's okay to actually have a problem uh, and not have to work up your own faith to pull this one off. Okay, it is God's faith that you're to be used and you're invited into that faith, faith as you're convinced that he adores you. So if he adores you, he will quiet all those questions that come up that say, well, I'm blessed and highly favored, but this di blessing didn't show up. And when I prayed, this person died. And when I prayed for a promotion at my job, I lost my job. And when I prayed to be healed, I got sicker. And when I prayed for my marriage to be saved, my wife left me or whatever it is that, wow, did not turn out well, right? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so in the place where the heart is sick and we all have sick hearts somewhere, that just needs ministry. And so in the place where we're like children and we're, we're going up to God and say, why didn't it work? And why weren't you there? And where were you there? And are you going to be there? And how's this going to work out? And where am I going to get my next paycheck? And how am I going to pay this bill? And how, how is this, you know, is, is my so-and-so going to be healed? And is my job going to be okay? And are my children going to be okay? And they're going to come back from it. And we have all these questions. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of whipping them out because that's usually how they appear in our minds. And see, until love quiets those questions, because you're loved and he's masterful. It's going to be hard for you to connect. And that just requires ministry. See, he will, he will joy over us with singing. Why, why, does, why does God do that? He's wild about us. We're his favorite thing. 
Yeah, even with the crap we did the other day, we're his favorite thing. You're not disqualified, right? And so in that place where we look to ourselves to have to do something, to get something, to be something, to do all of that, and God said, I already was, and I am, and I shall be. And I'm all that in a bag of chips for you personally, right where you need it, because I'm so in love with you. Yeah. And you see, that's why, that's how God settles those questions and he ministers to our heart and faith arises in our hearts. And then we're able, because faith works by love, see those things develop. And, and a lot of times, you know, the answers don't come quickly. Anybody noticed? <laughs> you love it when you pray and bam. That's awesome. I vote for that. But a lot of times he's walking it out. Let me say this about that. If you're in a process with the Lord, God is after so much more than just the answer to your prayer. Because God is more about um, about you than he is just about providing for you. Thank you, David. He's more about you and your development being conformed to his image. Now, this is not, let's not get all religious about this, okay? This is not, well, you're a sinner, so you got to look like me and clean, your, clean up your act. It's not that. This is not punitive. This is about unveiling the gorgeousness and the righteousness and the holiness of who you are right now now and who you always have been because God is not confused he knows who he created before the foundation of the world and chose to join with himself without spot or blemish before him in love he knows see we're the ones that get confused and we're the ones that that need to be persuaded that we're all that we really are all are, are all that in a bag of chips and the haunting question that comes up with so many is like am I enough it's about your significance. It's about your purpose. It's about your um, your uh, a value, right? It's about um, your uh, your value to God, and all of those things. And where we have those questions, and when we're we're so confused and rattled with who we are, it's very hard to be able to walk out in peace. And God wants to answer those questions. Every last one with his love that one that you're enough that you're more than enough that you look just like him that you're abs absolutely Jesus uh in your flavor right that you're manifesting yourself as a son and daughter that the plans that he prepared for you are gorgeous plans and masterful plans and fulfilling plans that he prepared for you to fulfill before the foundation of the world right and those are amazing and he's there always there to help you so wherever you're you're not feeling enough whatever that's where he meets you it's like yeah but I am but I am and I'm that for you there's nothing that's disqualified there's nothing that's separate there's nothing that's not good enough there's nothing that's too shameful um to be to not to not be in, enveloped in his love and who in himself as love so he quiets those questions see the resurrection is the proof that Jesus went all the way. You see, because the thing is, it's one thing to become a human being if you're God. It's another thing to become sin and take care, take just take that sin issue out of out of the out of the way when it comes to God's relationship with us. Our relationship with God still an issue. Why? Because if if we feel condemned, we're we're gonna feel separate. That's our deal on our end. Good morning, Michelle. Happy Easter. So, but in the place where God, you know, becomes a human being, so there's a value and walks out sinlessly, um, goes to the cross and becomes sin and and does that. But the resurrection proves that God had the power and the might to pull it off and so it is absolutely finished so all those questions that you have about your future about your significance about your purpose about your value about your holiness about you being empowered about your um, about your about your destiny all of those things are quieted with this love because he already overcame as humanity on behalf of humanity. And you're right smack dab in the midst of that and, and it's personal for you. 
he quiets you with his love and then he dances and sings wildly over you because he he got you he got you he secured you you are his you're his favorite thing and that's his joy that's his unspeakable joy and then it's a matter of helping others awaken to the fact that they belong they're in they're good enough that there's vast hope why because the love is shed abroad in our hearts right uh, he secured us and he quiets us with that love anyway i hope this has been a blessing for you today share this with someone who needs it i love you guys happy easter go enjoy something yummy go enjoy uh time with family we just got done a uh, zooming <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous. All these teeny little boxes and everybody's speaking and no one can understand what anybody's saying. But we saw each other on Easter, so that was good. Hallelujah for that. <laughs> but anyway, go enjoy family members, even if it's just a phone call. Uh, go enjoy friends. Um, go enjoy the one who loved you and gave himself up for you and let him enjoy you. Let him minister all of that to you today personally because you are wildly loved. You are adored. Love you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye.